Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is the second video of my uh, October Halloween Horror Watches of 2021. And uh, so I started off with the week with um, The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror 32. Uh, that debuted on um, Fox TV. I think it was this past Sunday. Um, it was okay. I didn't mind it. I like, I always enjoy the, uh, Treehouse of Horror, uh, episodes. It's not the best one, but I thought it was kind of funny. So, so we'll go start from there. Uh, next up, I watched, um, very interesting movie from 1988. And some people know that I've, I've already, I've told people I've watched this. And that is the uh, Massacre video release of Hack-O-Lantern. This movie is something else. This movie is wild. Um, directed by, what's his name, Jag. I write down my notes here. Jag Mun Mundra. So anyway, this, uh, this uh, Tommy, uh, he was a, a kid. I, suppose, I forget what year this was. So when Tommy was a boy, he saw his grandpa, the leader of a vicious satanic cult, murder his father in a brutal ritual on Halloween night. Now Tommy is 18 and grandpa is ready to uh, indoctrinate him into the ways of the black arts. But as night approaches, someone dressed, uh, dressed like a member of the cult whose face is hidden behind a, behind a devilish mask begins stalking and killing people connected to Tommy. Could it be Grandpa, Tommy himself, or someone even more sinister behind these increasingly brutal murders? Yeah, it's a it's a wild movie. Um, so if you think the killer is Grandpa or Tommy, it's not. It's somebody else. I won't tell you who, though. You don't have to watch it for yourself. Um, it's from the director of Open House and the Jigsaw Murders. Um, I've seen Open House. I have not seen Jigsaw Murders, so I gotta pick up on that oh, sorry I live near a uh, um, firehouse so you'll hear sirens every once in a while um, uh, do, do, so yeah it's a very very fun movie from the late 80s uh, so you get this particular release from Massacre Video you get the Blu-ray and the DVD now there is a uh, out of print version which has a slip cover with uh with this artwork on it but i never picked that one up so sadly i had to pick up this one which is fine you get a boatload of special features on here uh you get a featurette called the power is in the blood interviews with uh, two of the actors rare public access interview with uh uh, two actors and the director, behind the scenes photos and trailers for other Massacre video releases. Uh, this is 96 minutes from 1988. There's the back. Up next, I watched a you know a favorite of mine uh, growing up uh, in the 90s. Uh, a lot of people really enjoy this film too. The actual artwork on the, uh, the new artwork I don't like at all. And this is Idle Hands. I prefer this cover art uh, from 1999, uh, 92 minutes, starring uh, Devin Sawa, uh, Seth Green, Vivica A. Fox, Eldon Henson, uh, the ever so lovely Jessica Alba, and so on and so forth. Um, of course, you got the the, off, the band, the Offspring, in here as well. Um, I can't say nothing bad about this movie. It's it's just one of my favorites um, growing up. But yeah, uh, actually, this weekend I get to actually meet uh, Devin Sawa, so maybe I'll maybe I'll bring this with me and have him sign it. That would be cool. So yeah, Idle Hands, uh, best horror comedy. Uh, oh, sorry. Horror stoner comedy. I had that to the two, so definitely pick this one up if you haven't already. Up next, we have a more of a uh, family type movie. I, I didn't care for this one, guys. 
it was okay. It's not the worst in the bunch, but it wasn't the best movie. The uh, the effects in here were pretty cheesy. But this is from 2006, and that is Monster Night. Uh, so this is in the tradition of Scooby-Doo, Beetlejuice, and Ghostbusters. Uh, not really. It's more geared toward kids. If you have kids, it would be a decent movie for them. But I thought it was really cheesy and kind of dumb in the ways. Uh, so basically, Isaac and his younger sister Dana are stuck babysitting their five-year-old brother on Halloween. Little do they know that their Holly Weird house is really haunted, along with the high school jock and his cheerleader girlfriend. Uh, those are the two stupidest characters I've seen in a while. Uh, the four embark on a spectacular adventure complete with secret passages, dancing zombies, vampires, and otherworldly creatures as they search for their missing little brother. Yeah, his their little brother is like some sort of like pimp. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, that's, that was a little crazy in here, but uh, uh, Robert Carradine is in here for um, for a little while. He plays like this uh, weird, like, um, I don't know what he is, honestly. Uh, I think that's, that's him right there. He's like the uh, bad guy in the movie, if you will. So yeah, if you have little kids... In your, in your family, they'll enjoy this. Me, I thought it was pretty cheesy. <sighs> Speaking of cheesy, uh, this is an AGFA release. Uh, the movie itself is from 1991, and that is a uh, scary movie. Uh, so where do I start for this one, guys? I didn't hate, I don't hate this movie. I thought it was pretty cool, uh, the way everything carries out. Uh, basically, uh, this guy right here, um, he goes to a haunt in a small Texas town. Um, he's a real scaredy cat. He, he doesn't enjoy anything that would freak him out. So he thinks he's being followed by this, this guy right here throughout the whole haunt. So he takes it upon himself to, uh, I guess defend himself and kill this guy but uh i'll leave it at that uh, you can watch it for yourself it's, it's fun it's cheesy it's it's very low budget from the early 90s um but the spook house itself is pretty cool i like the whole haunt thing it's very bloody and gory for its time so uh yeah i recommend a scary movie put out by uh, agfa this is a region-free uh, Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. Unfortunately, well, you got a, a somewhat different artwork on the discs here. Uh, but yeah, you get uh, the scaredy guy there, and then you get the, uh, the guy with the mask there. Uh, what's next? Okay, so I, I went ahead and yeah, rewatched Halloween 2018. Uh, anticipation for Halloween Kills, which will be the next one I, I go over with you guys. Um, this movie is um, not my favorite in the in the franchise, but I don't dislike it. I actually like it quite a bit. Um, so basically, this one takes uh, over from the uh, fallout from the original. So we have to ignore two through seven. To get back to this one yeah two through seven to get back to this one so ignore everything else that's happened i uh, got some great performances in here from judy greer uh, uh will Patton comes back in here and yeah um you guys i know a lot of people hated this movie i thought it was pretty cool but uh so I watched Halloween Kills the other night, and uh, again, love the kills. The storyline was eh, okay. The acting was not great. Um, yeah, they should have picked someone else to play Tommy. I did not like the guy that played him. He's just like, and then the whole you know evil dies tonight thing just kept you know kept people saying it and saying it and saying it. And I'm like, can we say something else, please? Um. And then that ending was just crazy. Like, okay. 
but we'll see what Halloween ends is going to be like. So I can't wait for that. Uh, okay, up next, we have another cheesy film that I just picked up last week. Now, I went in, the, in this blind. It does take place on Halloween, and it does take place, takes, uh, takes place at a video rental store, which was pretty cool. And that is Late Fee. Um, uh, it's Halloween Eve and a young couple are desperate for something to do. They find an out-of-the-way DVD store just as it's closing for a private party. They beg the owner to let them rent some DVDs and ask the scariest for the scariest movie in the store. He agrees on a strict condition that they return them before midnight or pay the late fee. Halloween turns into a real nightmare when they neglect to return the rentals and realize the late fee must be paid in blood. Yeah, I, I fell asleep toward the middle of this, but that's because I was just really tired. Um, I remember the kills were pretty bloody and gory. Uh, it was definitely cheesy at times. And, uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to give it a rewatch. It seemed almost kind of like an anthology type of thing, too. Maybe they got sucked into the TV, to the, to the movie. I'm not 100% on that, but it, from what I saw in and out of consciousness, I thought it was like that. But I'll have to give it another rewatch. Uh, 90 minutes, and this is from 2009. Okay, this one. This one I've seen before, and I threw it on last night. Uh, I was vaguely paying attention to it because I've seen it before. This is a Wild Eye releasing uh, a release from 2017, and that is One Night in October. Uh, this is not the worst movie I've ever seen for Halloween related, but it's not great either. Uh, on Halloween, the, on the eve of Halloween, strange things are happening to the residents of a suburban town who are tormented by a series of murderous characters, both real and supernatural. As their tales intertwine, they weave together a haunting and escapable night of terror. The artwork's pretty cool, but the movie itself is not not like not as low budget as you think it would be, but it's still uh the atmosphere, the cinematography is pretty good as far as like catching that fall vibe and then the all the uh decorations outside people's houses were pretty cool. The acting not great. But uh yeah, not the worst I've seen. Uh, actually, that was the night before last. Last night, I just, I was too tired to watch a movie, so I, I watched, um, Goosebumps Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns, um, uh, episode on Netflix, uh, that's from 1996, it was only 22 minutes, um, I like the book better, because the, in the, in the episode, the, uh, the two characters that are not really human, they're aliens. Uh, the, it's just kind of cheesy the way they did it. But uh, it's a fun little short. Uh, I do recommend. I, I love the whole Goosebumps series, but that particular story is pretty cool. So I recommend that one. And then tonight, I'm, I've seen this movie before, so I can just tell you guys about it. Tonight, tonight I'm going to watch uh, Satan's Little Helper. From 2004, uh, directed by Jeff Lieberman, he directed uh, Remote Control. I recommend that movie as well. Uh, this is a cheesy film. Uh, basically, this uh, young kid, uh, what's his name? Uh, Douglas. He uh, lives out a fantasy of his favorite video game called Satan's Little Helper. He's like addicted to it. So, uh, this one random guy just in the suit he's i guess he's a real demon from my from what i remember um he is out to kill uh douglas's family and he thinks it's all video games and all fake when he starts killing his family but it turns out that it's uh it, it's not fake kid it's real so he and i think his sister i believe his sister um uh, uh, helps him get through all that so uh, it's a fun movie I definitely recommend it uh, Satan's Little Helper now there is a blu-ray out there but it's out of print and it, I don't think it was um, 
let's say. It's not legit, I guess you could say, because the, the, the version of the film on the Blu-ray is the TV edit version. This is the regular version. This is the rated R version. So, I hope they release this on Blu-ray at some point. This is a Screen Media Films release. Uh, I know Jeff Lieberman has been putting out his movies on Blu-ray uh, by himself, so maybe he'll do that eventually. I know he did that with Remote Control, but we'll see. Hopefully he does. So, that's everything I have for you guys for this video. Um, I will be heading up to Pennsylvania tomorrow to attend Monster Mania with my brother and I hope to see some of you guys there so feel free if you see me or him walking around say hey uh, we'll talk for a bit so look forward to that so take care guys and I will see you guys later